These are the top three second brain naps that have ever existed on the planet and will ever exist on the planet. Because my opinion is absolutely objective and there's nothing false that is going to be said in this video. Outside of most of it, it's all objective. I don't know what I'm talking about. Smash the like button, then click off this video. The first app that you'll be able to look into here would probably be Notion. So Notion has been popularized as the second brain option. If you look anywhere on the internet, you'll find that Notion is one of the better second brain options out there for users. It has amazing relations. I've been using the application for a long time. If you just take a quick look at this workspace, you'll see, yeah, that's probably a lot of data. If we go into my quote second brain inbox, you can see there's a lot of different information here, a lot of different content ideas, so much so that I have to like limit the amount of pages that I can show at once. Thank goodness for that update. And an amazing feature about this is if I connect any of these ideas to a new video, for example, if I do Tiago Forte, who is the second brain inventor, and figure that the problem with Tiago Forte kind of lines up with why Tiago Forte uses Evernote, <laughs> you'll see that it disappears because it has natural archivability with the different relation features that exist within the software. Now I can really dive into all the different ways you can use rollups, even automation, and a bunch of really great things with Notion in order to make it a great second brain. But if you wanna check out how I make that thing really nice, I would definitely check out my Skillshare course called Mastering Notion. If you click the link down below, you'll find my Skillshare course, Mastering Notion, and you can also get my second brain template and all of the other templates I've ever made by purchasing the Notion app system down below. So either you wanna go on Skillshare and maybe mess around and see all the different ways that you can use Notion, or you can get the course in Notion with the app system that I made and every template I'll ever make, including my second brain template for a one-time purchase. It's up to you. I don't know, it's cheaper than Skillshare, just saying. Regardless about my shameless plugs, the number two app that I would recommend is Obsidian, and it's not in any particular order. I mean, on the homepage, you'll see right here, I mean, look at this. Obsidian, a second brain for you forever? Pretty good value prop based on what the homepage says. Might be legit. A lot of people have really loved the way that Obsidian has this graph view and visually showcases the way that things can be backlinked together. It utilizes markdown folders and local data storage to really level up your setup and make it uh, honestly, a wonderful experience for those of you that want to be a more advanced note taker. Word on the street is if I were to go into Obsidian and spend less than the amount of times that I actually work in the software just on videos, I would get proficient at it and it'd be good. But unfortunately, I don't have that kind of brain capacity. But you can see within here, there are a myriad of different ways for you to connect between different notes. You can even connect between this and your Kindle, for example, with the different plugins. And it has some of the greatest plugins and an amazing community that I've ever seen. Seeing right here how all this professional training notes and running training and running shoes connect together, along with Matthew Centrowitz is an example of somebody who is a professional runner. It's beautiful to see how we could connect these things together and by utilizing really wonderful plugins, like even the Canbad board view, we can get projects made in here and we can do plenty of things within the software. It's available on Linux, Mac, and Windows, just like Notion, and I would recommend everyone give it a try because if you end up getting it for like the sync version, where it's not only just the local storage, but you get it between Obsidian on your phone and on your computer, pretty insane what you can do with it. You can have even the published version, which essentially turns it into a website for other people to look at, and it even has the interactive graph just like this. You'll see that my buddy Danny Hatcher actually has a really nice notes page in here where you can go and look at all the different articles that he has and it's a very wonderful experience he actually has a course that's really nice uh, as well that i would definitely check out um, this check reference is really cool uh, i know we're both big chess fans and this is just a really nice repository of information so check out my boy danny hatcher he's got some cool stuff his youtube channel is danny talks tech last but not least we're going to talk about any type this is a product I reviewed when it was in alpha. It was in a little baby. It was a little baby. It was the first steps. And while it has the most hilarious header I've ever seen. I mean, watch this. Fast. <laughs> Slow. Fast. Slow. Funniest thing I've ever seen. And it is essentially a little bit of a mix between what you'd expect from Notion and sort of Obsidian. It has graph views. It has a lot of the baseline setup and feel of what Notion is, but with local storage. So a lot of people do not like the fact that Notion is a cloud-based software, but this application 
takes the look and feel of Notion, makes it private, offline first, and infinitely customizable. What great copywriting. You'll see that it does give you a Notion-esque vibe, especially with the different board views. And if I were to go into the app itself, you see that it has things like table views, as well as different relations between items. So an example that I really like is the fact that you can use sets in here and uh, pick a lot of different options. So for example, if we pick book here, it just has this really interesting way of utilizing templates and creating properties. Uh, the weird thing though, is that relations in here are essentially what properties are in Notion. So it is a little bit confusing to some people. Making a new relation often gives a bunch of examples that are pretty useful. However, creating from scratch, you then can get a look at the fact that it has a lot of the similar properties to what's in Notion. And it really can just, it's scratching the surface of what's possible within here as a, as a big fan of softwares like this. It's beautiful to see that, you know, a Notion-esque kind of style of product can be seen through this graph view. Uh, you can't really do this in Notion, hopefully at some point here, but it's just, it's really weird. You know, it's like really weird to have a graph view in a software that looks so much like Notion, but isn't quite the same. Just making a new page on the left here and starting it as a blank canvas, you know, working in this, you see immediately the backslash functionality that's very similar to Notion with the embeds, with the toggle blocks, with the bookmarks. It's, it's a little too close for comfort at times, but it's got similar linking. That's really nice. However, it does the things that you'd you'd want to see from a visual standpoint, which is definitely needed in Notion. I mean, maybe not needed, but really wanted. If you could take this app in Notion and make it have a baby, it would probably be the best second brain app. If you take all these three together and make it have a baby, it would it would be insanely good. It would also be insanely good if you check out this video on how to improve your productivity even more.